Hi, good night, everybody. Welcome to a special event, a special episode of Skeptically Speaking. This is your host, Clive Forrester. Uh, tonight we're having um, a debate, uh, a, a morality debate, we, we, we're calling it. And the, the moot for this debate is morality has no transcendent source. Needless to say, the yard is skeptics, myself, and my uh, co-host and co-producer, Hilary the Fire Breather Sowers, will be proposing um, tonight. And, and we are you know, up against a team that's calling themselves the Objective Believers. Yep. Jeffrey Marshall, uh, who is in Jamaica, and Daniel Simmons, who is in the USA. Where, where exactly in the USA, Daniel? In Florida. In Florida. In Florida. All right. Right. Okay. Yes. Who oppose the mode morality has no transcendent source. Um, we also are joined by Brother Nick, more commonly known as Brother Nick, B. Richard Nicholson. He will be the moderator for tonight. And Allison is standing in as our show producer tonight, who will be feeding questions to the moderator as well as managing the chat room on YouTube. So it's going to be a lovely debate, an, an interesting debate tonight. We hope that um, people will tune in. We know that we are infringing on your Shonda Rhimes, Night, <laughs> Grey's Anatomy, Scandal, and all the with, with murder. But we hope that um, everything will run smoothly. It seems like Brother Nick um, lost this connection just now. Um, perhaps um, we'll have to ask Alison. To, to, to start mm -hmm. off the mark. Sorry, sorry to put you on the spot like that. <laughs> but <laughs> but um, the, 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 the order of, of, of the, the debate is more or less um, you know, interchanging uh, between the, the, the two teams. So um, until Brennanik comes back, Alison, could you just moderate? Okay. Um, okay. Let me formally introduce the the debate. The debate is morality has no transcendent source, and of course we have two guests um, who believe that there is a transcendent source for morality. Um, and in a few minutes, I'll I'll get them to introduce themselves. And opposing that view is of course the the skeptically speaking duo of Clive and Hiller, who is going to argue that morality is something that evolved naturally, I think, in our species. Um, so let me turn it over to Daniel, we'll start with you and then follow up with Jeffrey, and we'll give you a brief couple of minutes to introduce yourself and introduce where you're going to go with, the, with your um, start of the, the debate. Well, well so actually, Daniel, Alison, uh -huh. uh, well, uh, it, it might be better to do it in the in the fashion that we we will speak, starting with the other skeptics who are the proposers. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Hilaire and Clive are going to go first. Yes. Yes. Well, Clive, Clive first, and then Daniel, and then we'll alternate. Okay. Yeah. Right. Well, okay. okay. Clive, over to you then. And and keep an eye on your watch, Alison. No speaker should be go more than seven minutes. All right. So, here is Brittany coming back. Okay. Uh, so, Oof. All right, good, Brother Nick. Nice to have you back. So, so Brother Nick, oh. get your timer ready. The first mm -hmm. seven minutes, all right? Yeah. All right, here we go. Good night, everybody. Night again. At, at his trial in Athens, Socrates is brought up on charges of corrupting the youth of Athens, and more importantly, undermining the religious authority which was pervasive throughout the city-state. He took the witness stand as both defendant and advocate and proceeded to artfully defend himself against his inquisitors who sought to land a conviction against him. Most notable among his challengers was one Euthyphro, whose dogmatic allegiance to religious authority led him to convict his own father. Socrates, having skillfully maneuvered himself out of Euthyphro's questioning, poses a simple yet devastating question which confounds Euthyphro and has troubled Western theologians to this very day. Does God command what is morally good because it is itself good? Or does whatever God, God command automatically become good because he commands it? The question underpins the notion that there is a divine transcendent morality and is indeed the crux of our debate tonight. 
Either answer to this question ultimately paralyzes the idea that morality has a transcendent source. If God commands what is morally good, because it is itself good, then it means whatever can be called good is independent of a divine source and is instead a phenomenon which, which can be detected if not rationalized by individuals which can perceive it. And if whatever God commands becomes good simply because he commands it, it means morality is simply a byproduct of divine whimsy and the idea of good and evil becomes meaningless. My colleagues will set out to do one singular task from two different perspectives. I will explain for our learned opponents how it is that the phenomenon we come to recognize as morality naturally evolved in the human species as a socially adaptive behavioral trait which serves to facilitate and promote cooperative communal living. Indeed, all the current research on the evolution of morality maintains that this is the case, with the one contention being whether morality has a genetic component or it is purely shaped by one's environment. My colleague will explain the process by which this naturally evolved behavioral trait becomes incorporated into social norms and then into prescriptive laws and regulations across time, geography, and context. At different points, we shall acknowledge how appeals to religious authority. Can I say that again? You're, has, you're froze. Okay. At different points, we shall acknowledge how appeals to religious authority has hijacked and corrupted morality to serve its own ends. Needless to say, the task of our opponents will be a rather challenging one. For if they hope to be successful in this debate, they will have to at least satisfy two criteria. Firstly, they will have to demonstrate that a naturally evolved behavioral trait, which we come to recognize as morality, that facilitates communal living, is an unreasonable idea. Aspects of this behavioral trait are seen in virtually all species which live in organized social groups. Secondly, our opponents will have to convincingly tell us where exactly morality originated, if not via naturally evolved route, and by what process it descended into mankind. We will not Go again, sell tree, a talking snake, or a disobedient woman. Or oh, let me just repeat that. I broke mm -hmm. up. Yes. Yeah. We will not accept as evidence the following. Any story involving a magical tree, a talking snake, or a disobedient woman. Any explanation involving an invisible, undetectable entity living inside our bodies or any evidence which uses an argument from personal incredulity that is to say an argument which suggest, suggests one answer must be right because they are unable to fathom an alternative answer I'm asking that you the audience be on guard for when our opponents try to slip in any of this non-evidence into their challenge to the moot for they will try but our rebuttal shall satisfy what we can reasonably call evidence. It shall not be permitted. For the purposes of this debate, we will treat the terms as such. Morality, a set of values and principles of conduct which are held by an individual or a community, and transcendent, a phenomenon which surpasses, exceeds, or defies the limits of the natural universe. I rest and my opening statement. Thank you, well, Mr. Moderator. That's early. You've had two more minutes, but good. Um, Lovely. All right, all right. Daniel, you ready? Yeah. Um, all right. You have seven minutes. Okay. ISIS, Mother Teresa, Hitler, the Dalai Lama, to anyone for whom those words hold significance, there is an instinctive association with either good or bad, murder, sharing, rape, Caring. These words also evoke a definite sense that some are right and some are wrong. All of us instinctively believe in morality, just as we believe our possessions should not be stolen and our lives should not be taken. It was atheist Peter Case who said, whatever skeptical argument may be brought against our belief that killing the innocent is morally wrong, we are more certain that the killing is morally wrong than that the argument is sound. Torturing an innocent child for the sheer fun of it is morally wrong, full stop. But where does the sense of morality come from? What makes us instinctively declare 
that some things are good and others are bad. Over the course of this debate, my partner and I will defend two basic contentions. One, morality is a meaningless term if it's dependent on subjective humanitarian opinion, thus the only meaningful morality is an objective morality. And two, that a transcendent source is then necessary for the illogical existence of objective morality. These are, of course, conditional claims. We do not seek to prove the Christian God or define which religious entity such a being would represent. For the purpose of discussion, however, we accept that a transcendent source outside of humanity may be referred to as God. In addressing the first point, morality is meaningless if dependent on subjective humanitarian opinion, I will first quote from Colin McGinn in his study of ethics, evil, and fiction, where he says, the validity of a moral judgment does not depend upon the person by whom the judgment is made. In saying that moral values belong to the of reality, the statement implies an objectivity independent of the achievements of persons in informing their lives and values, and is even independent of their recognizing their validity. Whether we are guided by them or not, whether we acknowledge them or not, they have validity. Objective moral value is valid independently of my will, and yet it's something which satisfies my purpose and completes my nature. Now, subjective means to be based on or influenced by personal feelings, taste, or opinion. It can be based on fact, but it is one person's interpretation of that fact. Objective, on the other hand, are facts devoid of feelings or personal interpretation. While I may formulate a subjective opinion about an objective fact, I cannot create an objective fact based on my subjective opinion. Which brings us to our second point, that a transcendent source is then necessary for the logical existence of objective morality. A.E. Taylor, a renowned Plato scholar and moral philosopher, argued that were there no will in existence except the wills of human beings who are so often ignorant of the laws of right and so often defy it, it is not apparent what the validity of the law could mean. Recognition of the validity of the law thus seems to carry with it a reference to an intelligence which has not, like our own, to make acquaintance with it piecemeal, slowly and with difficulty, but has always been in full and clear possession of it. And a will which does not, like our own, often set it at naught, but is guided by it in all its operations. It is important to note that this is an ontological, not an epistemological argument. To borrow the words of Paul Copeland, belief in God isn't necessary for being moral, but, and the but is applied, the existence of a personal God is crucial for a coherent understanding of objective morality. Thank you. Done? All right, everybody is charged tonight. All right, you have three more minutes. All right, um, Hilliard, you go. I'm up to bat. Yep. For the mood. Okay. Um, but let me just get the time straight. So you start okay. at 9:13. You're going on to 9:20. Yes. Yes. Well, um, thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. Um, I, I'm what I'm. I'm struck by by Daniel's presentation. Um, because um, she's made, it seems to me, a series of claims which we are without any substantiation. Um, so, for example, um, you know, the claim is that um, the only the only basis, the only valid basis of morality is is is, is objective, and, and 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 connected to that has to be some transcendent morality. However. Up to now, she has not established the epistemological credentials of this transcendent morality. Now, I think that, that this is the first, one of the first burdens that I think that the other side has, that you must prove the existence of this transcendent morality, however you may define it. Um, you know, Daniel has indicated that it, may, that it doesn't necessarily have to be the Christian God, or in, but if you're saying it's transcendent, certainly if one is to accept the, the definition of transcendence as set out by, 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 by my partner, um, that is to say outside of, um, outside of, 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 of nature, outside the scope of man's knowledge, then you, you have to prove it. And, and it seems to me that you know, you're going to have a, 
you're going to have a, a, a very difficult time improving that which on the face of it, by definition, is inaccessible to, 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 to human beings. And certainly to, to um, the, the basis upon which we, I mean, given the basis upon which we acquire knowledge, which is, which is rationality. Um, you, Daniel, also has indicated that, um, you know, that, that essentially, you know, without this objective standard, and I'm paraphrasing here, then it's just left to individual interpretation. Mm -hmm. um, but to me, that, that, it seems to me, is the, the very definition of a reliance on the transcendent. If you're going to rely on a transcendent notion, a notion which cannot be verified, it's not for, it's by no means falsifiable. Um, then that to me is that to me is a touchstone of of, of, of subjectivity. Um, I don't unlike many of those who claim a, 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 a transcendent source of morality. I don't be, I believe that morality very much very much operates in uh, in our objective verifiable world. We don't need a source. Uh, we don't need to violate Occam's razor. You know, that is to say, to include entities or assumptions to explain it. Um, <coughs> morality ultimately, ultimately is about well-being. It's about minimizing, minim minimizing harm to others and, and, and maximizing and maximizing and maximizing happiness where possible. Um, you know, um, Victor Stenger, you know, the, 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 the scientist and philosopher, um, ask the question, where does morality come from? He said it's very simple. We learned it in very much the same way that we learn, we learn that if we plant a seed, you know, that something is going to grow. We, we get food. We don't need to rely on some, on some trans, quote unquote, transcendent source to explain it. Um, and so I, 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 I don't think that, um, that, 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 that a case has yet been made, um, in my view, to establish a transcendent, this transcendent uh, uh, source of morality. Um, if you want, if you look at, um, if you look at the evolution of, of humanity, um, you will see that we have, we have, we have progressively, as we've, we've developed more and more knowledge of, of, of what humanity means, we have moved more and more towards the a rational morality, which is to say, maximizing the well-being of others. We see, for example, in this day and age, in the, in, in the post-enlightenment period, in, um, in, 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 in areas such as human rights. Human rights, for example, represents, is representative of, uh, of, of, of a morality, which in turn is grounded on a notion of who we are as human beings. Compare that now, compare where we are now in the post-enlightenment age to when morality, quote-unquote, was defined or dominated by those who claim the transcendent, transcendent source, okay? We go back to, we go back to a, 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 the era when we had something called the divine right of kings, okay? And that was premised on the notion that morality... <laughs> Sorry, am I miss my time up? No, I'm not. You have three minutes. Oh, so, 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 sorry, sorry. I thought I heard this. Okay, and that in turn was premised on on a divine what what is called a, a divine divine the theory of what is it divine command theory? You know where whatever was commanded, um, whatever was commanded by the king was good. You know, and again that feeds back into you you five proposed dilemma that 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 Clive mentioned earlier. Now, if you want, if if those who want to be governed by this transcendent, transcendent uh, source of morality, however you define it, um, and want to go back to the days, you know, in which human beings um, had no value on, on, unless they happened to be kings or, or in the aristocracy, um, in which all manner of brutality, um, whether they're burning people at the stake for, 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 for their lack of faith, uh, or, 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 or if they happen to come up with theories that went contrary to um, the prescriptions of institutions that the church relating to to science, I mean, um, you know, we, we still, we still, I mean, poor, 
poor people like Galileo, um, who 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 was pilloried uh, by the by the church for for having the the God to suggest that guess what the Earth is not the center of the universe. You see, the, the difficulty with with relying on a transcendent morality, which has no objective, which has no objective determinants, that has that is not that's not bound by an investment in human well-being um, is that it licenses, actually licenses people uh, time to... Up, time is up? Okay, all yeah. right. <laughs> We're right. done. Um, okay, now we go to our final rebuttal, uh, Jeffrey. Um, all right, so it's, it's 10, 920. You have until 927. All right, thank you very much. Um, Glad to hear the comments made by my distinguished opponents and by my esteemed colleague. And they're very good questions indeed. I would first look at the statement that Clive made and that we refer to it. Asking the question that so in, was God command good or is it good because he commands it? I would say the answer is neither. When we talk about morality, morality isn't talking about what God describes or defines. We say that morality comes naturally from him. So because God is, therefore morality also is. It's not a matter of whatever God commands is moral, but because he exists, morality exists also coming naturally from his nature. So the question would be a second. The question is misplaced because it's not about God's commands. If you see God giving commands at the Ten Commandments, it's not Him creating the commandments, but it's Him stating what already exists coming from His nature. So that is exactly how we're just that point there. My co the colleagues spoke about the evolution of morality, and I found that to be interesting because we see a plurality of societies with a plurality of morality. For example, we will say that rape is wrong. Rape is just wrong, absolutely wrong. And we can, I, I mean, as a believer, I would say rape is wrong because of human rights and the rights of the person. But someone in India or in Saudi Arabia where rape, where marital rape is legal, a man can legally rape his wife and nothing happens to him, you would, I would ask, why is it that there are two different in that society? Are they right and are they moral? Well, we're not moral. And in that sense, just confusing me because if, it is my position that if scientists will define what's moral and what's not, then we have to ask on what basis is our society able to judge another society to take a position that we don't like. Objectively, that we, that the truth of the matter is independent of whatever we feel or whatever we believe. So one can ask the question, is rape wrong because our society says it's wrong? Or is rape wrong even if a society or someone feels that it's right? Because someone can argue, we can find a rational reason for anything we do. We say we're, we're trying to maximize happiness. The rapists might say, well, let's maximize my happiness with this woman. And some others might say, well, if you're, if you're going to make you have to sacrifice your good for the for the for the, for the benefit, to benefit, say that's moral. But in that sense, maximize doesn't make it moral. And that's enough. So the, the atheist philosopher, Kai Nelson, he made a very key point where he said, and he quoted in his essay, let me find the quote right here, where he said, pure practical reason, even without, let me start from the beginning. He said, we, we have not been able to know that reason requires the moral point of view or that all rational persons, one who thinks by myth or ideology, need not be individual egoists or classical amorists. Reason doesn't decide here, right? Your practical reason, even with a good knowledge of the facts, will not take you to morality. Or if we are saying that we define our morality, whether it's society or coming from some human aspect of the then we are saying that anything we decide or whatever we change our mind, that's going to be moral. Once upon a time, slavery was as moral and acceptable in society, and then it changed. Was it moral then, or is it not moral now? Which is a question. Why is it changed? The evolution of morality, in that sense, 
makes me wonder why is it that we would say that slavery is wrong now when it wasn't wrong back then. We are going to say that slavery is wrong, period, because of human rights. Now we need to find say what are we appealing to when we say humans have rights? Why do humans have rights? I would say humans have rights because we are created in the image of God. But if we are here by chance, if we exist by nothing for nothing, then what rights do we have except the rights we give ourselves? And if we are giving ourselves that right, do we actually have rights or we just give them to ourselves like that? We are just giving it to ourselves. Is there actually any meaning in that? What makes it good for me to give it to myself and not to someone else? Why wouldn't someone else have their rights and they won't give it to me? It goes back and forth, that's my opinion. So basically, I believe that the two options are either we are saying that something is wrong, independent of our position or anyone else's possible matter. We must refer to something outside of ourselves. Because if we look at it and we define what's right or wrong, then it varies according to whoever is making the definition and it all becomes meaningless. That is why we say that the need for any kind of absolute morality, even defined good or evil, for the words good and evil, we suppose an objective standard by which good and evil are defined. Without that objective standard, terms are meaningless. Thank you very much. Okay. Hold on. Yeah, yeah. I'm getting a bit of feedback. Benedict? Yes. Um, how, how is it? Can you hear me? All right. Well, first of all, Benedict, do you have yes. on the YouTube video in the background? Is somebody watching the YouTube video in uh, the background? Yes. yes, somebody watching. They're, they're, they're going to have to either go to a separate. Yeah, we're getting a really bad feedback. Yeah, they'd have to go to a separate room. Or you give them your headphone or something. Um, um, quick. Um, um, the feedback is still there. Give the person your headphone, Bernadick. Bernadick, give the person yeah. your headphone. <laughs> No, it's it, it, it right, right now. No, 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 it's not from me this time. It's gone. Veronique? Are you still there? No, I'm starting now. Veronique? Yeah. I'm here. Veronique, move. Yeah. I'm here in my face. The, the person, there's a person okay. watching the video in the background. Oh, I'm not going to watch um, our, 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 tell the person just to leave the room now or give them your yeah, headphone. Yeah. You hear anything? Well, not right. Not right now. It's still sort of a bit distorted. I'm not sure why. But, um, yeah. All right. So uh, I'm just going to move into responding now to, to Jeffrey. Yeah. All right. So, um, so, all right. Now we've had this, 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 um, this, this two openings and um, the two rebuttals. Um, so we're going into the discussion. Um, all right, cool. Anybody can question anybody. And, and all right, thanks for that, Brother Nick. All right, so just to kind of respond to um, some of the, the, the issues raised by our opponents mm -hmm. um, before I, I explain the evolution of morality. I noticed that um, Daniel started off by, by, by kind of mentioning um, a, 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 a transcendent entity without giving it a name. But by the time it got around to Jeffrey, Jeffrey is talking about full-on God, which I'm assuming is the, the, the Hebrew God, Yahweh. Is well, that one? I'm not sure which God you're referring to. I was referring, remember, I was referring to your um, quotation or your question about asking what, what God is in terms of do, does God command this or God command that. So okay. my, 
So my reference to that was whichever God you're talking about. I mean, I know the God I believe in. in that. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Well, no, I'm, I'm, I'm well, not assuming this. I'm the, just saying that the, the morality that we're talking about isn't coming from him commanding anything, but from who he, from, coming from no, who he is. Well, well the, the fact that you can say something definitively about the nature of this God means that you somehow know this God. And I'm going to come back to asking you exactly how you know this nature of this God in a second. Okay. But um, let me explain a little bit about the natural evolution of uh, morality. So, now you, you in your presentation, Jeffrey, mm -hmm. you said, you know, different cultures have different moralities. Right? Yeah. Now, the, the, the only reason why it appears like this, take for example, um, fear, right? Brother Nick, would you turn on your computer? Still hearing the feedback. I'm not, I'm not sure where the feedback is coming from. Alright, let me test it, test it. Anything from my side? Um... Alright, hold on. I think it's a little better now. Hello? Everyone yeah, still hearing me, right? I turn up. Yes, yes. All right, good, good. All right, all right. I minimize the feedback. All right. So as I was saying, um, you see the emotion, fear. If mm -hmm. you notice, all human beings are born with that emotion. It, would you agree? The emotion no, called fear, right? All are born all, well, well, all, all, all non-brain damaged human beings are born with the capacity to fear. Mm -hmm. But what exactly we fear is environmentally determined. And it changes with context, changes with culture, it changes over time. Okay. Right? It's the same thing with, with morality. All human beings are born with the capacity to make moral judgments. But what exactly is considered right or wrong will um, vary between cultures, will vary between time, will vary between context. Oh, what, 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 what of course seems to be more across the board is that human beings avoid pain and seek pleasure. Right? So we avoid pain and we seek pleasure. Okay. And our first, oh, like this, the the, 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 our first circle of moral concern is ourself, right? Mm -hmm. So we are firstly by the way, and I, foremost I, concerned I'm about ourselves, asking, are you, are you right? Mm -hmm. Then the next, the next person that we include inside that circle would be our kid, our offspring, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and of course, the person who helps us to make the offspring, right? Mm -hmm. So the first. The first, the first point of moral concern is the self. Mm -hmm. But then this circle has to be extended towards um, our, our kin, uh, our next of kin. Fine? And you, know, no, you, you don't have to learn to be. This, 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 this behavioral feature is, is so standard across all uh, mammals, especially primates like human beings. That you, you, you might as well call that that, that behavioral trait in it, right? The, the 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 behavior to be altruistic to next of kin. Uh, and uh, so uh, it Clyde, is that we become. Yes, what's that, what's that? Yes, Brendan. Yeah, is that question you're, you're answering or you're asking what? No, well, I'm 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 explaining how morality evolved naturally. All right. Um, did did somebody ask you? Uh, well, well, we are proposing. We are proposing. So I think it's necessary that I put it on the table. Why we don't need a transcendent source of morality because it can evolve naturally. Well, well, well I know, but I mean that would have been put on the table from your opening thing. So, so I didn't explain um, how it occurs. I didn't explain how it occurs. So I'm oh. just going to say a few more sentences on it. <laughs> All right, few more. Just right. a few more sentences, right? So as I explained, um, as I was explaining to Jeffrey, our first point of moral concern is the self. Fine. We are first and foremost concerned about our own selfish desires. 
but because we're communal animals and we have offspring, we have to extend this circle to our next of kin. And it is in extending it to our next of kin that we also have to extend it to other persons around us in our, in our community. Because human beings are self-sufficient. And it is through this gradual expansion of the moral circle of concern via being altruistic and, and reciprocally altruistic a, a, a kind of behavior emerges which we in turn uh, perceive as morality. Okay. All right, all right, and in time, now, in time that becomes the argument. prescribed um, by law. All right. Um, I am not denying. I am not denying the possibility that people can be moral without a transcendent God. I'm just saying that if you're talking about morality itself, that. It can that to say that it's just coming from evolution to me is not enough. For example, you spoke about fear and feelings and pain and pleasure, but I'm not sure how you connect those emotions to morality. You said that it is our the natural inclination is to minimize pain and maximize pleasure. I can right. I can get behind that. Yeah. That's the basis of you know, the, the human existence. However, I'm not quite sure how would we jump to from that to say that it's no moral for me. To, maxima, to, to take pain, for example, if it's altruistic to fear, but we haven't defined what makes it altruistic. Why, what, how does altruism make any benefits towards evolution? Let's look at it this way. If it is, my, if it is in my interest as a, as a human being to make sure that my genes get propagated and yeah. to make sure that I am satisfied with whatever I do, how is it immoral for me to maximize my pleasure by making sure that I am taken care of no matter what happens to anybody else? Well, I'll explain it to you. I'll explain, I'll, I'll explain that. I'll, I'll answer that question right now. Wait, hold on a second. I'm almost so, 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 no, no, but, but just before I forget. So remember, no, you know, uh, as you rightly said, the, the, the purpose is to replicate your genes, right? Mm -hmm. to, 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 to pass on to the next generation, to replicate your genes. Which means that you have to. Add, 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 add. Sorry. You have to at least. Be, uh, your genes. One more time, I'm sorry. It broke you'd, have to be, you'd have to be altruistic to your, to your offspring, isn't that true? Well, to your offspring, but we're not talking about offspring, because morality... Give me, a, give, me a, stop. give me a second, give me a second. I'm, I'm replying to your point, no, you said offspring, but morality is broad-based, because while I can be more altruistic to my offspring, and then we haven't even defined what altruism is, but what would make it say, like, someone else, I can't say, I'm not going to feed them. They're going to go away. I don't care. I'm looking after my people only. And and I'm, going going to answer, I'm going to answer that, too. And I'm going to answer that, as well. So, no. To be altruistic to your, to your offspring, you have to be altruistic to the person who is going to help you to make <laughs> offspring. offspring. Do you understand that point? And this is the person who is helping you to create your offspring? Yes. To me, you have to be altruistic to your mate. To, to, me, to my mate? Yes. Well, why, why do I have to be? People, people rape their wives all the time. Women have been battered and bruised. Well, well, yeah, I, yeah I, but can I come in? You could do that. Yes, yes, he did. But if I, if, if I might, if I might, I mean, there is a, I mean, life, life, let's, let's go real fundamental. Okay. Life is an uh, is uh, is is an either is an operation either on on the basis of being an on or off switch. You're either alive or you're dead. Okay. Okay. No. If you are alive, if you are alive, and you 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 therefore, given that 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 you know human beings are are, are central, they're volitional beings, they're purposive beings. Okay, mm -hmm. assuming all of that. Okay, they must yeah. therefore seek to organize themselves in such a way as to enhance their their chances of surviving. Self preservation. Okay. No, 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 no. If if I if let us say I operate, okay, mm -hmm. in a manner which is wholly wholly selfish. Meaning, I'm only concerned with with my my satisfying my needs, even if it means that I I subject other people to suffering because we are being denied their needs, right? I have, I can anticipate because I have a brain. I can anticipate that one possible consequence of that might be. 
that if legislate something before us, me, some misfortune before us, me, there will be nobody to look out for me. Okay? So, 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 all I'm saying is, all I'm saying is, it's, it's, it's nothing more pragmatic than, than, than to me, ensuring that you keep that on switch on as long as possible. Okay. Okay? Pra that's, that's what morality is based on. I mean, and the other thing, my final thought would be this. If you took human beings out of the equation entirely, let us say there were no human beings on this earth at all, there would be no morality. Why? Because there would be no need for it. Morality is, is, is relative or response to human needs. Okay? Mm -hmm. And that to me further undermines this notion of a transcendent source of morality. Because such a because what would it be for this transcendent source to to, to, to be a, a curator of morality at all? That's only something that human beings or primates require. All right. I, so I, I, I don't want it to be said that, that you guys have been in the, um, in the discussion. Um, that's yeah. fine. That's uh, fine. Jeffrey, Daniel. All right. Do you have anything to say, Daniel, before I jump in? Yes. The, oh. the argument that morality cannot exist without humanity is similar to the argument that if a tree falls in the forest and nobody's there to hear it, it doesn't make a sound. Morality exists and right and wrong must exist whether or not there is an entity there to act upon it. It is not dependent upon humanity. The evolutionary process as you describe it also cannot be correct because we have seen in history that Several different subtypes have endeavored to, to create what was in their best interest at the expense of others. For example, in the Americas, we have the Native Americans who were put upon by the English settlers. Now, you could argue, by your argument, that the English settlers were doing what was in their best interest by taking the land, by bringing in smallpox, and by doing all these things that propagated their species. But historically, we look at that and we say, that was wrong. That was immoral. Therefore, the evolutionary process that will automatically know and automatically do what is moral doesn't stand up in the historical context. No, no, but nobody is saying, nobody is saying that, that human beings will always um, comply with a moral code. Nobody is arguing that. What the, the argument is, is that morality is a response to human need. Okay, so that if, if without humans, and I would perhaps extend it to primates as well, without their existence, there is no need for morality. My argument, so if let us say, let's assume there's, there, there's no life on Mars. Is there morality on Mars? I would suggest no, because there's no need for it. There's no need for it. Morality to me is very much focused on, on, on uh, uh, ultimately, a certain rational morality is based upon the notion of well-being. But morality isn't rational, that's the point, because there is nothing rational about, for example, the, the example that Daniel put forward, where the English yeah. came and they wanted to take over the land. It would not be, uh, if they want the best for themselves and they have the power to conquer the Native Americans, it would not be rational for them to take in the Native Americans and treat them as equals when they were not. But evolutionary theory... Is but that's not how it started out. That wasn't how it started out. Well, um, it's a moderator, because we didn't interrupt anybody. Uh, all right, um, go on. No, well, I'm just saying that's not how it started out. You misrepresented history. Right, right, right. Make, make him develop the fight. Okay, because we said self-preservation and is often in direct is often in direct um, conflict with morality. He just spoke about self-preservation and morality. But many times self-preservation is in direct conflict with morality. For example, you may look at a man, a group of soldiers are in the jungle in Vietnam, and the enemy throws a grenade, and one of the men throws a grenade and he jumps on it, sacrificing himself to save his members his team members. We will say he did a very moral act in terms of self-sacrifice. He did an altruistic act. But that was a, not a self-preservation act. By, by evolutionary standards, he did a very foolish thing. What would be the evolutionary explanation for a man to sacrifice his well-being like that, to sacrifice his life for the benefit of... Can I, can I respond to that? Can I respond to that? All right, yeah. Can I respond? Okay. Yeah. All right, so, so first and foremost, Jeffrey, mm -hmm. there are many 
other species, the entire group. Do you know what a bee is? Mm -hmm. Do you know what bees are? Yes, I do. All right. Do you know that when a bee um, stings something, it dies, right? Yes, I do. Good. So, because of the, the, the social structure in a, a beehive, it, is, it, it makes perfect sense for the bee to sacrifice itself for the sake of the hive. Bees do it, ants do it, and, and, and all of those type of insects which live in colonies do it. Are, right? So are we? So, no, 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 no. But what you are saying, I am, I, am, I am demonstrating to you that self-sacrificially behavior, self-sacrificial behavior, can be accounted for in evolutionary terms. So what you are saying is not true. No, but I'm saying it's, it's not because you spoke about self-preservation, which is not a matter of the the, 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 benefit, the benefit of the species itself, because we are not... Morality, if we're talking about morality, right and wrong, we're saying animals don't know, animals are trained, animals don't know about right and wrong. The whole part about right and wrong... No, no, well, yeah, yeah. Right, right and wrong, right and wrong, those terms, those ideas, right and wrong, are human invention. What but, animals have is an adaptive behavior which allows them to live in a community, which allows them to live in an organized society. Okay, Give me a okay. second, Jeffrey. Jeffrey, if I tell you about a group, a group of individuals in Africa, so I'm mm -hmm. going to tell you about a group of individuals in Africa, right? Mm -hmm. Now, this group of individuals in Africa, they work together, they hunt together, and they, 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 they take care of their young. Mm -hmm. And if, if one of the members of the group was in group and they defend they defend um, group members even if group members are direct relative from attack from outside um, forces mm -hmm. would you agree that this group is behaving in a kind of moral fashion they're behaving in a logical fashion uh, so moral I wouldn't quite know because behaving behaving no, no, give me a second do, do you, do, doesn't that kind of resemble moral behavior no, because we still haven't defined, let's say, defined morality. Okay, they're, all right. They're, they're doing behavior that is good for their survival. But yes. Okay. Whether the behavior is all right, right or wrong. Good. Good. So, so, so you would at least say that, that that kind of behavior is beneficial for the survival of the group. True? Mm -hmm. That's all right. Even a behavior like consoling somebody who was hurt? Consoling somebody who was hurt? Well, yes. that's a human emotion. And the question would be, now, how do emotions connect with, with morals? You know, ask what purpose does consoling... I'm talking purpose? about, the group I'm talking about is actually a group of chimpanzees. Uh, chimpanzees, okay. chimpanzees console uh, members who were hurt in a fight and they console their young. Mm -hmm. Chimpanzees you... do it, not monkeys. Mm -hmm. so, so higher primates display this behavior. So I'm not talking about a human group. So even though what I described sounded as if it was human moralistic behavior, what I was actually talking about was a group or, or a troop of chimpanzees in Africa. Okay. Well, remember, I didn't, I didn't say it was, I said it was beneficial behavior. Yes, not necessarily moral, because we are still looking at the question as to say what exactly morality means. Oh, you said a while ago that right and wrong is a human invention. Which would mean that morality is a human invention, and therefore morality would be whatever I would want, whatever I would want to invent. No, but that's not what morality is. Well, he said right and wrong is the human invention. No, no, I said right and wrong are, are human inventions. Yes, those therefore, are value judgments. Those are value judgments. Right. But, morality but, but is, morality is a principle of living. Morality is a principle of living. Coming from where? It's an, it's an adaptive behavior that we evolve. But, but it's based upon the environment in which we live. In other words, in words in let, let, let us say, I mean, because I'm saying that morality is, morality, morality is based, in my, in my view, on, on what, what ultimately, what ultimately is going to serve to minimize, minimize, minimize suffering, okay? And maximize, and maximize, and maximize happiness or well-being. No, they are objective. They are objective. No, they don't say that. Those are things that can be set out objectively. No. Would it be? Would it be? Would it be good or bad to give a child arsenic? I suggest it would be bad. If it, would it be good or bad to ensure that a child?
child a new nutritious breakfast before they go to school. I suggest they will be good. Okay. okay? No, what? no. What I'm saying is that it is relative to human need. So let us say that we had adapted. Human beings had adapted so that we, we, we didn't need water, but we, we needed arsenic, for argument's sake. Withholding arsenic would then be considered a bad thing. Okay? As opposed to as opposed to as opposed to withholding water. Okay? In fact, if, if water had the effect on us, that arsenic, uh, water has effect on us as arsenic, then giving somebody water if they're thirsty would be a bad thing. Okay. So I'm saying it's all rooted in, in our in, in, in our existence on this plane, which has nothing right. to do with any transcendent plane at all. All right, you, you guys right. enjoy yourself. Um Alison, you have any questions for for, for the debaters? No, so far no questions in the I in the know. chat room. I I just would I, I would like to know though um how how Hilaire and Clive would account for the u universality of belief in the divine. Hmm. Well, that's off topic. Um Clive, you go first, I'll go after. Could you repeat the question again? <laughs> Clive had started out talking about evolutionary um, um how is evolutionary and adaptive behavior and about yes. pleasure and pain and these were adaptive behaviors that humans had evolved and morality um, um, basically is, is structured in that parameter. Yes. And I'm asking if you could account for the universality of humans also believing in yeah. the transcendent and the divine. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. So in terms of a belief in um, you know, a, a transcendent, you know, being or a transcendent entity. Um, it, it is possible to account for that in evolutionary terms, quite simply. And and it is this: our distant ancestors were hunters and gatherers, and weren't very, you know, knowledgeable about the natural environment around them. Now, as a result, you know. You, you you could venture out of your community at night and you could easily die, fine? So it was always in the best interest of um, human beings to evolve a kind of heightened sense of uh, danger awareness, fine? So that's the first uh, premise. And a, a lot of other species have a heightened sense of danger awareness. So because, yes, because human beings are so complex. Not only did we have a heightened sense of danger awareness, we assigned agency to things that we, 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 we thought um, you know, were, were, were dangerous. So say for instance, um, you know, we are a small group of persons. This, this group here, we're a small group of persons. And we hear um, like thunder, right? Or not even thunder, something like rustling in the bushes. No, so it, is, it is in our best interest to assume that the rustling as a result of a predator which is coming to kill us rather than um, something else which is not dangerous right so it is better to hear to err on this on, on the side of caution right now once you start to expand that kind of thinking it only becomes a matter of time before you start to assign agency to things like the rustling in the bush or the sound of the thunder and all of these things. You, you, you start to animate these various unknown phenomena. Fine? And, and that is, of course, something which happened very early in, in the evolution of Homo sapiens. Um, it's, it's really a primitive part of the, the, the brain. The part that controls fear, the part that um, assigns agency and meaning to unknown phenomena. And that is why in just about every single Go again, human Clive. belief... Oh, you hear me now? Yes. Right. And that is why in every single human civilization, there is a belief that um, there is a, a, a kind of divine entity or a kind of mover, a, a kind of grand mover and shaker of different events. So evolutionary psychology, in fact, does account for um, religious belief. 
Yes. Um, <laughs> I, I, was, I, was, I was expecting um, Clive to put it in simpler terms. Okay. Uh, I think there's, there's a much quicker humanistic um, explanation. Anyway, um, who's responding? Daniel has a response to that. All if right. I, I can start saying, yes. We're, as we talk about evolution, we're saying, our, our opponents are hypothesizing that our evolutionary process has brought us to the morality that we have now. And they have also stated that right or wrong is our human invention, that our evolutionary process happened because of where we were at the time that we happened to be there, and so everything kind of just glowed, and here we are now. If we accept that, if we accept that our morality is our own invention, and that it is dependent solely on where we happen to be and what time we happen to be there, then how do we say that our morality, or what we decided to be, is superior to that of the monkeys that Clive mentioned, or of the dolphins, or of any other uh, species that has gone through the evolutionary process? Mm -hmm. If we say that our morality is as subjective as that, then we cannot claim that any other evolutionary process is inferior or superior to our own. Nobody is claiming that. No, nobody is claiming that. In that case, if we are not claiming that uh, our are perfectly adapted, adapted to the environment, if if that is what we are claiming, then if we are not claiming that our own morality is superior to that of monkeys, then we could say, then we could say, it is possible to say that monkeys have a higher standard of morality than than we do. It well, is also no, possible. No. It is it also possible to say that if, if such is possible, if such is possible, then what we have isn't really morality at all. It's just something that we made up. And the, 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 no, 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 I mean, no, 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 transcendent source is what is made up. Morality is something that is lived. Right. Okay. Oh. Morality is something that is lived. Um, Here is the thing again. Lived how? Because we still, we still haven't looked at the differences between the things. For example, we may say that. We, if, if we say that it's, it's moral, you say that it was, we have to maximize our survival and that we do that kind of thing. If somebody comes with Ebola, is it moral for me to shoot him to make sure that I am safe or to not treat him to no. keep him away? No, no, because what, what I'm trying to say is that, what, 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 what Jeffrey, it's, it's not a kind of, it's not a kind of zero sum either or, well, you know, it's either you or me. You know, I think that what we try to do, what morality I think tries to do is to harmonize where possible. Um, the, 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 uh, on the basis that we are social mammals, we have different needs, there are limited resources, there are, there are, are oftentimes conflicting needs as well. And morality is, morality is a tool, I believe, that we use to make that determination. No, it's not a, but hold on, just let me finish your point. It's not, it's not, it's not, morality is not a sort of set of commandments. You know, thou shalt do this and, you know, it, it's not absolute. What I'm saying, but what I'm saying is that it is ultimately relative to human needs. That's why I go back to my, I go back to, to the example I, I, I gave before. You know, if, for example, we are human beings, therefore we need, we need food, we need water. So withholding food and water from a human being, I would consider to be wrong. No. On the other hand, on the other hand, let us say somebody is some your 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 child is prone to obesity, but you feed them a lot of junk food. I probably consider that wrong too, okay? Because it is impacting on the well-being of a human being. But he's happy eating it. And the okay. thing is, I'm I'm a bit confused. On the one hand, you say that it's about happiness and pleasure. But if I'm fat and eating a lot of food, that's my happiness. And I'm, saying, I'm, talking I'm, talking I'm talking about a child. 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 No, 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 hold on, hold on. No, I'm not finished yet. Right, I, I need to finish this uh, Jeffrey, Jeffrey, to be fair, to be fair though, the, 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 the humanistic definition is really about well-being, not, not what you call pleasure. Even if we argue from a well-being perspective, we still could not say the argument that our, our opponents are hypothesizing, because then we could say that, we could not say that cannibalism is wrong. Cannibalism says that by killing and eating you, I have... No, but I well, well, give me, well, could I respond to that? Let me respond to that. 
Mm -hmm. Right? So first and foremost, um, it, it, it has to be clear that what Hillier and I are proposing it mm -hmm. isn't, we are not prescribing what is right or wrong. We are not prescribing a, a, a kind of morality. Morality values and principles. Okay, I, I'm saying morality. Morality at, at, the, at the base level simply means a set of values and principles of conduct. Right and wrong now are, are, are judgments which human beings make. Daniel mentioned something about cannibalism just now. Mm -hmm. In a situation where um, you know you, you're, you're in like a, 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 a life or death situation, where you know you, you, you're isolated on a small island and you have five persons either floating on a raft or something like that. No, if it is the case that um, you know. You, you have to eat to stay alive, then chances are in that particular situation, and, and this would have happened much earlier in that to eat that person, to eat a person who is dying, the, the, you know, the, the person who is least likely to survive, to eat that person might be some necessary to, su to sustain another person and in that case it would be morally wrong. Well here's an example for you. This is actually a current example. There is a video being shown now that purports to show a Middle Eastern uh, warlord cutting open a soldier, taking out his heart and eating it. This is something that's purportedly happening right now. And any time yes. the video is shown, yes. they say, oh my goodness, this is wrong. This is penis, this is awful. If right. we say, if we say that morality is subjective, uh, and it depends yeah. on personal well-being, and that it depends on my evolutionary process, then we okay. cannot say that that man's actions are wrong. Actually, we can't. We can't. You just said that morality is values. So if my values are different from yours, what right do you have to tell me that I'm no, 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 but, but, no, no, but you're, you're, you're assuming that values have no objective objective component at all. That it is oh, you saying values are not objective? I am saying that values, you are seem to be assuming, unless I'm wrong, that, that values, the notion of values, mm -hmm. okay, have no objective determinant. I mean, and then, and then I wanna, no, no, but I am saying, I am saying that they are. So, no, it's not just a part of what exists in my head. Okay. Uh, ultimately, 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 as we've said, as I've tried to emphasize before, that uh, the whole notion of morality arises out of this whole, this this idea of human relationships, of human beings having to relate to each other. If right. if you if, if absent absent human beings and relationships that they must forge with each other in order to survive and hopefully to, thr to thrive, there will be no morality. There's no morality. So, so that we can objectively determine, objectively determine that, look, cutting out somebody's, some, you know, cutting out in somebody's chest, mm -hmm. taking out their heart, okay, is, 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 is certainly violating, certainly violating their, their entitlement. Okay, to life. To the, okay. To life. <laughs> that, that's, that's number one. Two, and, and certainly, certainly, their entitlement not to not to be subjected to cruel or inhuman treatment or punishment. Okay? So that is more rooted in, in, in the nature of who we are. If, for example, one final point, if let us say we were constructed as human beings, where we were immune to suffering or pain, Okay, or grief or anything like that. Again, I suggest that we probably have no need for morality. Okay. Suffering so, and pain is something that, that, that you can objectively verify. All right. Let's, let's see if I don't have any more questions. No, wait a minute. I need, I, need to, I need to address this point really quickly. Uh, all right, go through and then, and then we'll ask. So questions are finding up, all right. So you're saying, Hilaire, that values yes. are objective. Or oh, they can be. Or rather, more specifically, our values often have an objective dimension. I'm not saying totally, they are totally objective, but they largely do. Things like the, the good life. I can okay. make a case for, say, the good life having been objective, objective determinants, okay, good, good, as a good, bad life. Because I'm, I'm just trying to, because I'm, I'm still confused here. You said values are objective. 
yet what is the source of that objectivity? Because if you're saying it's human rights, you may say, I'm say I would ask you, why the woman, why the woman to decide it? Give me a second, what, Jeffrey. What Jeffrey, Jeffrey, right? Jeffrey, one of the things that one of the things that you seem to be totally ignoring is that even though um you know, as as I mentioned at the start of the, 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 the debate, what we have is an innate ability to make moral judgments. Fine. What exactly we consider right and wrong will will change depending on the time, the context, the environment, and so on and so forth. But as a result of that, give me a second. As a result of modern civilization, we have not only you know, used our innate ability to make moral judgments, but we've prescribed them into law. Because, you know, we human beings are intelligent enough to recognize what standard of living is beneficial enough. Yes. For the, let's get it right. We don't no, always get it right. No, that, but, that, that, but, that, 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 that's, that's, a very, that's a very large assumption that isn't proved by reality. We see what? even today. No, look, listen, yeah. even, even in today's society, if we have people killing people all the same, no matter what. People still but it's illegal to do so. Yeah. No, it's illegal, it's illegal. It's illegal. It's illegal and immoral are two different things. Mm -hmm. People will break the law all the time. Moral, okay. Morality isn't about what? Isn't about whoa, whoa, whoa. Give me a second, Jeffrey, Jeffrey. But then all you're doing is reinforcing what I said originally. Because human beings live in close-knit, civilized societies, it became necessary to prescribe a kind of behavior but which is necessary to based on what? Because like I, like based, I said, yes, based on a utilitarian no, principle. Based on a utilitarian no, principle. Since you want me to give it a name. No, but no, but based that's on a principle true. based on a principle which maximizes Right. Well right. but but then that still Listen, doesn't one second, one second. I'm going to respond to something Daniel asks. Daniel mm -hmm. gave me an example and I'm going to pose this example to the objective believers. Another example. Mm -hmm. Daniel, are you listening? Yes, I am. Hear the example now. Imagine you are you are on a runaway train in the conductor's seat. Fine, and you, it's a runaway train. Fine, and you, no brakes. You, you're barreling down the track. Now, on the way down the track, you see a child who is playing on the tracks. Fine. You, you, you know, this child is playing unaware of the train which is barreling towards him. You can't stop the train. You can only divert it to a second track. When you notice the second track, the second track has a group of 30 people. Young and old people, men and women, boys and girls. Objective believers. Do you allow the train to continue along the path and kill the child? Or do you divert it to the second track that plows into a group of 30 people? What do you do? Hmm. I, I suspect that this silence is going to last a very long time. Not quite, because I answer to that it's question... It's an old familiar question. I, I wouldn't think the answer to that question has any bearing on morality. In a yes, sense. it does. Yes, That's it does. What do you do? Because either way you go, somebody's going what to What do you do? But, yeah, but what, what, tell me, what will you do? You haven't answered the question. What do you do? Yeah, what, 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 what do you, in other words, he's asking, do you sacrifice the one for the many? Yeah. Well, either way you go, you're going to kill somebody. What either. do you do, no, no, Jeffrey? No, no. What but, but you, you either do? kill one person or 50 people. What would you do, Jeffrey or Daniel? All right, may I respond, please? Yes. Mm -hmm. I was saying, I don't see the answer to this question to be anything morality one way or the other. You can say yes. that no. You can say you're gonna just let the train continue in its natural course, and the child is gonna die. It's not a matter of you killing the child because the train. You have no control over the train. You, can, you could have diverted it. You, you could have diverted it. You could have course. diverted it. I didn't say oh, that. Okay, said, okay, Christ. Can I put the question in the reverse? Um, what if, what if, what if the, the train is is heading with 50 people on the line in front of it? And then there's one person out there. If you if you swerve off the line, you're going to kill that one person, but you're going to miss the fifty. What would you do, Daniel? What would you do? I have Jeffrey, Jeffrey, my... Jeffrey has refused to answer. What would you I do, Daniel? Mm -hmm. Answer. They give me a chance to answer, but talk, Daniel. So I I agree with my partner. I agree with my partner on this that I'm not seeing the connection with the argument about morality. Yes. All right, let me tell you the connection. Let me tell you the connection because 
Right now, none of you have answered the question. Let no. me tell you the connection anyway. The connection is this. This is an old-time moral dilemma called the dilemma of the runaway train. Mm -hmm. It was posed, this, this dilemma was posed to persons who are religious, non-religious, Christian, Catholic, atheist, agnostic, Muslim. And mm -hmm. by and large, the decision is to sacrifice the one for the many. Okay. Human beings are naturally altruistic, utilitarian. Right? We, we're naturally utilitarian. We naturally oh. try to maximize the pleasure of the many. Why didn't you answer that question, Jeffrey? You did Why not answer the question. You didn't give me a chance to answer the question. I was okay, saying what is the answer now? I'm saying the answer to the question does not, into my mind, doesn't have any effect on morality. All it does. Moderator, moderator, please intervene. Jeffrey, what would you do? I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. Right? If you let me talk, I'll, I'll get there. All right. And to my mind, answer doesn't have any. The, my choice wouldn't have any effect on morality. It would have an effect on me saying what's going to cause the least damage. I would say yes, it's, it's, it would be less damaging to, to, do, to let the train go and kill the one person than the many. But that's not a moral decision because either way someone's yes, going to die. Is. Yes, yes, it's, it's a moral judgment. It is. No, it's it not. Is the, moral, moral the, moral the moral judgment would be in the sense of if I have a choice to kill somebody or to murder somebody or not to murder somebody, what do I do there? What you're describing right there is not murder. It's a matter of manslaughter in the sense that any, any decision that I make, someone is going to die by something that I have no control over. The train is running away. I cannot stop the train. All I can do is to make a judgment to say where is the least damage going to be. Morality... Right. That's a moral judgment. Because, because here's the thing, though. Morality isn't talking about the numbers. Someone once said that... <laughs> If you, kill, if you kill six billion, if you kill one person, that's a tragedy. If you kill six billion people, that's a statistic. What is the life of the one really more? If if you kill six billion people, are you really more evil than this person who murders one person in a terrible way? Morality, Jeffrey, in, Jeffrey, in, Jeffrey, in, Jeffrey, no, Jeffrey, Jeffrey, Jeffrey. Well, I, I'm not, I'm not supposed to be answering question. any question. But, um, oh, can I ask even, even if, even if, even if we accepted that there is a moral basis for sacrificing the one yes. over the many, even if we accepted this. Ironically enough, from a Christian perspective, this also would tie back into the transcendent source. Because if you read from the Bible, and I didn't want to really go there, but if you read from the Bible, the <laughs> Bible teaches that specific morality. That's what? The Bible teaches that exact morality that oh, wow. one can be sacrificed for the many. Mm -hmm. Where? Where in the Bible is that? If you look in the gospel, there is yeah. an example where they're, where they're planning to crucify Christ, which is a historical event that has been proved. Jesus. No, it hasn't actually been. Yeah. Anyway, go ahead. The hypothesis is that it is better, and this is actually quoted somewhere in the Bible, I, just, I can find the reference for you, it is better for one yes. man to die than for the entire nation to be destroyed. So even if we agree that that is a, that, that is a moral judgment, it still has a theistic root. Mm -hmm. this, 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 yes, but well, hold on a minute, can I jump in? God wipe out the entire human race? Didn't he wipe out the entire human race because of two bad cities called Sodom and Gomorrah, two fabled bad cities? Um, no, you're, no? you're, you're, you're mixing up stories there. I think you're conflating Noah right, with... Well, no, 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 but, but could you answer that question, Daniel? It's a question for Daniel. Did God not wipe out the entire human race, including all the animals on the planet, because of the evil and iniquity in two cities? Mm. No, you, you're mixing them up. You mixing them up, okay. but but I get you. I get you drift. Well, yeah. Well, uh, you know. All, all right, then. He he wiped out. Um, he wiped out the, 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 humanity, the whole right, because of a, in, because of that, inequity yeah. in a particular location. No, yeah. no, not not quite, not quite. Yeah, you, you know, you know the story, brother Nick. But it's not a matter of inequity in a particular location. It's much different than that. But this isn't a Bible. World. World. <laughs> That's a different debate topic, which I would love to get into at another no, point. No, well, 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 Daniel was the one who suggested that um, biblical morality or, or, or uh, the, the Christian principle or whatever, this, this transcendent source, will sacrifice one for the many. Mm -hmm. But we've seen time and time again where um, you know, the many have been sacrificed. 
take for example, take for example the, the, the orders to, to Joshua's army to kill mm -hmm. the Midians. Didn't God ask Joshua to kill everybody <laughs> the non combatant? Yes or no? Did, did God ask Joshua to kill his army? To, to, God ordered Joshua's army to kill all, all, the, all the people, not just the, not just the combatants, but all the people, including <laughs> babies which were still in the womb. Did God order that? Yes or no? Uh, what about, what, about, the, what yes. about the Passover? How about the Passover? Yeah, where you mean where God killed all the firstborn? Yes. Yes. All right. My question is, yes, all of that happened. My question to you. Was that, is that good or bad? Wait, 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 wait. Is that good or bad? Me? It, it, it was neither. Because. Oh. I, no. uh, don't. Ah, you meant don't. Let me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me say what I okay. said. Okay. I'd love to hear this, Jeffrey. Okay. If God is a creator, God is a creator. Right? Yes. We believe that God is a creator. He is a yes. source of life. Yes. No he, evidence. What? No evidence to... to well, to, to we're not talking about evidence. You can't, you, can't ask, you can't ask me about some um, example and then say there's no evidence. But continue. Uh, 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 let him tell, gentlemen. Yes. No. If God, if God exists and did what you said, then we're saying that God is the creator of life. He's the one. He's the source of life. He gives life and he takes life away. So if, if, if God is the one who gives life, it is not immoral for him to take it back. Because if, we, if, if you create a robot, you have the right to turn that robot on or turn it off, right? So human beings are just... just I think human beings are robots, what I'm saying. No, no, less than robots. We are less listen, than robots. Listen, listen to me, listen to me. I am not saying that human beings are robots. I am saying that in the same way that if we supply power to something to give it life, we can take it back. We can say that God has the or the right as a creator to take back the life He has created. We, I can, if I were to kill you, that would be immoral, would be a bad, a wrong act because I didn't give you life. I don't have the right to take okay. your life. So, but so, so you're, is saying, one. you're saying, Jeffrey, it is perfectly fine for God to kill human beings in the most cruel, inhumane, painful, and 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 and, and, and you know terrible manner. By drowning them, burning them, stabbing them, you know, you um Well no 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 what you're doing what you're doing there, you know, you're looking at something to say that you're judging it by your values, but we just said again that if morality is there, what makes it so bad? How As do you feel about that, Jeffrey? How do you feel about a God? You are you are saying that this is that we're talking about how the humans weren't coming into this. This God that you're talking about, you mm -hmm. are saying this God be, simply because he is alleged to have created humanity. He can do whatever he wants to any human being. Kill them, maim them, burn them, impregnate them, um, you know, cause them to, 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 to fall into all manner of you know, tribulation and whatever. Is, is that what you are saying? And you have no problem with that? I have no problem with it. You know what? I have no problem Good. with it. Good. I am morally superior to that God. I end up this question. In what sense? Sir, if I may... Hold on, how are you morally superior to him? Because I would never, mm -hmm. if I have... I know that he has. I would never, under any circumstances, allow human suffering, any at all. What if what I, if what I, I, give me a second, Jeffrey. Jeffrey, if I, if I know exactly when the next rape is going to take place, mm -hmm. I would stop it. Okay. Your God knows when the next rape is going to take place, and He doesn't. Okay. I am some exception, hot enough, man. God. I am okay. more than why, why is suffering? Why do, why do you believe that suffering is immoral? Well, isn't it? Is isn't it? Especially the kind of suffering. No, no, so it's, no. It's, it's, it's not I just the act of suffering. It's but the kind of suffering. This is, this is why is that suffering is immoral? Ah, we well, see. Now we come to the nub of it. Now we come to the nub of it because if 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 to me, um, you don't accept, you know, the the existential terms of 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 morality. That is to say, suffering does exist. And no, the no, imperative. No, no, well, well, no, no, no. But what I'm trying to say to you is that from a humanist standpoint, okay, mm -hmm. as opposed to a transcendent standpoint, from a humanist standpoint, it is uh, it, it, it is it is not considered a good idea for people to suffer. Okay? Alright. We I have a it's, a, for it's you. a better hold on, hold on. it's a better idea to create okay create and to, 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 to provide conditions in which people can flourish. 
No, wait a minute, wait a minute, because I'm 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 coming right back to that. No, you said that is, is you said that suffering from a humanist perspective is bad because he is better to allow people to flourish. If yeah, I have cancer, suffer. if I have cancer and I take chemotherapy, I am suffering through the chemotherapy to to get rid of the cancer. But by your definition, that suffering would be bad. No, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying at all. That's not what I'm saying at all. That's not what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. No, 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 you know that, that sometimes it's painful. It's painful, but what I'm trying to say is that the objective, the objective yeah. of the exercise is it's not to inflict pain. suffering. Yeah. That's not the intention to relieve it. Yeah. But what I'm trying to say to you yeah. is that is that what you have described, or what has been described by this transcendent source, i.e., the Christian God, is mm. an intention to inflict suffering, which is a completely yeah. different ball game. Okay. Totally yeah. different. No, no, and what I'm trying to say is that. And from a humanist standpoint, mm -hmm. that is morally wrong. I do, and I disagree, and okay, and I disagree with you because you're looking at it from a very not close off point of view, but from a narrow point of view. No. Because if you look at let's let's look at this. If if a, if a child is suffering, right, from right. cancer, a child is suffering from cancer, he doesn't know what's happening to him beyond the fact that he has his pain in his body. And mm. now his parents send him to chemotherapy. And they put him in the chemo, and according to him, the pain he's feeling from that chemo is worse than anything he's feeling from the cancer. Right. He said to himself, my goodness, my parents are evil. They're making me suffer because of the thing right here. But he doesn't see the whole picture. He doesn't realize that the suffering he's going through right there is for a greater purpose, which is to cure him. But, he can, but, but that can be explained. He is looking from that narrow perspective that he doesn't it's know. Narrow, it's not narrow at all. It's not narrow at all. It's not narrow at all. It's it's very much it's very much it's very much based upon as again again I go back to our to, to, to the existential underpinnings of morality. The fact of the matter is that as human beings we are prone to suffer. We are prone to suffer. We are prone to to to, to situations in which we are brought to pain and grief and all of that. What the, the hold on a minute. The, the, the humanist, the humanist notion of rational morality says to suggest that no, we, we don't, we, we, we don't need to, we don't need to celebrate that. We don't need to, we don't need to inflict suffering if it's not necessary. And where possible, where possible, we try to alleviate it. All right, okay. I'm going to no, 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 no. Let me make one final point because mm -hmm. I need to make this point because when, when, when this whole thing, this, this, the, the whole this. Anesthetics, okay, was invented, okay. One of the major mm -hmm. opponents to that was the Catholic Church, okay, mm -hmm. because somehow, from their transcendent point of view, okay, only for suffer, okay, particularly women in childbirth, okay, because of that. Because of that, I have a quotation. I have a quotation right here. You you spoke about existentialists, but at the same time, an existentialist doesn't have morality. I'm quoting from John Paul Sartre right here. I quote: "When we speak of abandonment, a favorite word of Heidegger, we only mean to say that God does not exist and that it is necessary to draw the consequences of His absence right to the end." The existentialist is strongly opposed to a certain type of secular moralism which seeks to suppress God at the least possible expense. Towards 1880, when the French professors endeavored to formulate a secular morality, they said, nothing will be changed if God does not exist. We shall rediscover the same norms of honesty, progress, and humanity, and we shall have disposed of God as an out-of-date hypothesis which will die away quietly of itself. The existentialists, on the contrary, find it extremely embarrassing that God does not exist, for there disappears with him all possibility of finding values in an intelligible heaven. There can no longer be any good a priori, since there is no infinite and perfect consciousness to think it. It is nowhere written that the good exists, that one must be honest or one must not lie, since we are now upon the planet where there are only men. Dostoevsky once wrote, if God did not exist, everything would be permitted, and that garbage. for existentialism is the starting point. 
which is everything Darby. is indeed permitted if God does not exist. And man is in consequence forlorn because he cannot find anything to depend upon either within or outside him. Right, That's what I'm May I respond? Yes. Yeah. Okay, well, well since, you, since you're doing some quoting, let me quote at you too. Okay, mm -hmm. this is from A.C. Grayling, The God Argument, The Case Against Religion and for Humanism. Humanism's fundamental premises are these. The first premise is that there are no supernatural agencies in the universe, mm -hmm. and the second connected premise is that our ethics must be drawn from and responsive to the nature and circumstances of human experience. <laughs> Religion, by contrast, is premised on the idea of an external supernatural source of moral authority. Mm -hmm. In the standard case, it is said that the agencies which possess this authority are personally interested in having humankind conform itself to their purposes, and that religions in which they figure further teach that petition and sacrifice can influence those purposes. No, I, 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 I lay out all of that just to, just to just to again emphasize mm. that this notion that unless you have some restraining um, external force, okay, does not track at all with reality at all. And this notion that without God, well, know, without without God, everything is permissible. I know that quote very well from the what's it, mm. brothers or whatever it is. Mm. It doesn't it doesn't track with reality because to the contrary, to the contrary, the mm. problem with having uh, this notion of a transcendent. Um, source of morality is that it ultimately licenses human beings to carry out any and every act of immorality that they can possibly. And we've seen that over right? and over. And we've seen that over, over, and over. And over. As long as, as long as, as long as you can say it is sanctioned by God. Okay, you see, for example, right here in Jam in Jamaica, you mm -hmm. see, look, look at the opposition against against the the homophobia. Generated against LGBT people. What is it based on? It's not based on reality. It's not based upon the nature of the humanity of the people dealing with. It's based upon on, on what some so called supposed transcendent God have to say about for same sex exactly. people. Okay. So because it doesn't track because reality. They, because because of the, 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 the God God too broad no, no, no. There are many. Be honest, no, Jeffrey. Jeffrey, be honest. Be honest. Look at the kind of things which have been perpetuated in the name of God. Mm. Those things could not have been perpetuated uh, any um, there, other way, there, there, any uh, other kind of system. No, of no, no, no. I, I, I address that in the point. If you look at somebody like Stal Joseph Stalin, if you look at North Korea, if you look at um, oh, no. the, the, the yeah, Chinese... Yeah, we, we, Come we, on, let me take that one. 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 Jeffrey. Moderator, please moderate. Moderator, please moderate. Is people who are acting on behalf of a God? No, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. I will. I am not denying the fact that many persons have acted and done many wrongs and crimes in the name of God. However, many other persons have also acted wrong and done wrong, even though they didn't believe in God. And that how goes to show that there is no somebody. Physical. How do you know when somebody is doing something wrong in the name of God? How do you know? How do you know? Wait a second. If this, if the the key thing is that they're doing something wrong. If they say they are doing something wrong, wait a minute. If, if I say that God told me to do something, how do you know it's wrong? How can you know whether it's wrong or not? Well, you would say because uh, if, if you say if God told you to do something, you say is, is this thing right or wrong? Because say, how do you define right and wrong? You say well. well you tell me. You tell me. Oh, feedback, feedback. Sorry, if God told you to kill your your son, would you do it? God would not tell me to kill my son. But oh. what? Hold on one second, Brother Nick. We, we're getting some feedback on your head, Brother Nick. Hello. 
I'm going to turn down your mic. I'll turn it down your mic for a second, Brother Nick. Jeffrey, if God asks you to kill your son, would you do it? Be before, I, before I answer that question, I need to go back to the other thing. Because you, you said that God would not tell you to kill your son? I did not say let me let me let me really be refer to your first point. Did he test your faith like that? Could he test like your faith? And you said previously that many many wrongs and sins have been done in the name of God. And I said that is true. At the same time, many persons who have do 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 not believe in God have done the same kind of crimes, the same kind of atrocities. That but, but so Jeffrey, Jeffrey, that, 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 that point that point is so irrelevant. It's no, it's not irrelevant. But the point here, the point yes, here is no, it's not. The point here is that people will find any any reason to do wrong things. Just because I claim something doesn't mean that that gives me the right to do it. If, if I were God, to say, that, Jeffrey, if you God, want to God, give God to my son, but hold on, but then, then I suppose that I God would have done what God would have asked if I if I am saying if I am saying to you that God told me to do something, that doesn't mean He did. Oh, oh, you know. This is your evidential and epistemological bird that up to now oh, yeah, oh, you, you know, have yeah. not discharged. How do you how do you know that God how do you know that God never told the the, 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 the British people to go into Africa and capture slaves and carry them to to a um, the Caribbean. How do you know that God never told him to, to tell him to do that? God does not tell people to do something that is immoral. That is one. If we look what? in the wait, 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 listen to me. If we look in the Bible, where you, you, you may talk about where God where God told people to kill the Midianites, etc., etc., etc. No, if you, you can look at the Bible studies to show that there was a reason for that. It's not a matter of murder. <laughs> wait, 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 let me ask you something. Is it, is it immoral? Wait a second. Is, is there a difference? Is there a difference between killing and murder? That's the first question. Is there a difference? Is yeah. there a difference between yeah. killing and murder? Yes, yes. yes. And okay. the Midians were murdered. The Midians were murdered. No, 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 no. You say they were murdered. You say, what, what makes it murder? Okay, I'm a lawyer. I can tell you what. Thank you very much. I'm I'm a lawyer. Hey, <laughs> um, you you murder usually certainly common law is the is the killing of another person with intent to kill or to cause grievous bodily harm. Okay, that's the standard definition of murder. The intent was okay. intent. A second, the intent. So so so. Well, on, well, on. intent. Intent to kill or to cause grievous bodily harm. Okay, so there right, so, is a mental right, element right, as well as the actual. No, right, no. I have, a question, I have a question based on that. So yes. if, if, the, if the state is executing somebody, they're intending to kill him with grievous bodily harm. Is that murder? Well, the, there intent, is a, the intent isn't malicious. The intent isn't malicious. Okay, so they were talking about malicious. But now. hold on a minute. Hold on, no, no. I can explain if you want. If I mean, I, I don't want to sort of detour into the. But there's a distinction to be made. Okay, okay a judicial, a ju ju judicial. I'm saying a judicial execution is mm -hmm. an exception to that, that to what I just said. Though. That's an exception. Okay, All right. Exception so, by, uh, by law. No, no. But but we, remember, we're talking about we're talking about. What your claim is, God would not ask anybody to do anything immoral. All right. Our argument is, is that there, the, 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 there are, are multiple examples in mm -hmm. which he, he, or in his name, persons were murdered. That is to say, there was an intent to kill. As in, for example, as in, for example, the flood. As in, for example, Sodom and Gomorrah, as in, for example, the, the, the plagues, as in, for example, the killing of those children who okay. teased that, 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 that property okay. life show. You, okay, okay. No, you, you so just... All of that was... No, you wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, you made your point, no, let me ask you something. You don't... Okay. 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 Okay.
No, some, I don't know what's going on. All right. But in the meantime, let me address that point. Because I would, if you say that murder is killing someone with malice and intent to harm, yes. but execution is different from murder because execution is putting on a judgment saying that because you have done this, you are going to die. I don't see why you would call what God did in the thing murder as opposed to execution. It is. It is. What so did the babies do? Where is the babies do? Where is the babies do? Where is the babies do? What did the babies do? What did the babies do? Where is the babies do? No, no, no. What did the babies do? Let me explain it. 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 First of all, one second, Hillier. Hillier. Jeffrey, what was the crime From of the babies? No, the again, 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 I raise the point. God gives life, and He can take life. Okay, all right. He's a dictator. He's a dictator. Yeah, sure. He's a dictator. Let me address me here. Okay, let us suppose that the atheistic argument is correct. This is an atheistic argument. This is a scientific one. All right, scientific argument. All right. We'll go, we'll go with that. Let's say the scientific argument is correct and there is no transcendent God. Who? No God. Jeffrey's wrong. I'm wrong. There is no God. Yes. You're right. Even if we said that, absolutely nothing has changed. In terms of what? The, the wars that have happened have still yes. happened and will continue to happen. The mm. wrongs the wrong that you say are wrong, have happened, and will continue to happen. Even if there is no God, these wrongs have still happened and will still occur to happen. Are there therefore, no therefore, logically, we cannot the, lay if it God 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 at his feet if we... You know, you know that there's a difference. You know that there's a difference between the existence of God and the belief in God. If the belief in God continues, you know, we'll still have what you're describing. No. Well, well, the question of whether God exists or not doesn't depend on his belief. Because whether, whether or not I believe in something doesn't affect the fact of whether it's true or not. Whether true. you believe something doesn't exist doesn't affect the fact of whether it's true or not. True. So the belief doesn't matter in that sense. We're just saying here... But it does. But it does. Because all, all people do, all people do is believe that God exists. That's all you have to do. No, not at all. No, 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 let me add something. Let me add something. Bear in mind, bear in mind, bear in mind, that, bear in mind. Let's go back to what the mood is. Okay, the mood is, right, morality has no transcendent source, okay? So, your, the burden on you is not just simply to say, well, I believe there is one. You yeah. must demonstrate the existence of yeah. such a transcendent source. Something which I might add, you, ha you are yet to do. You are yet I to don't. do. You have not demonstrated it. All right. I have, sorry, I have said before, right, that... If morality is relative, like if we are going to say that morality is something that we create, you said that it's our values, you said that values are objective, but I'm saying objective in what sense, where are they coming from? Because we are still saying, okay, I am saying that humans have rights, based on what? You're saying that our society has the best, or we're talking about the values that our society possesses, but you said what makes my society different than another society? That but mm. Jeffrey, mm. Um, Jeffrey, but values values is something that operates only in our minds. Okay. However, what the, what we value, in other words, what I value, if I value good, if I value good health, okay, mm -hmm. the, the the cognitive process of valuing operates in my mind. But the notion of good health is something which it can be objectively demonstrated. Well, if I have, if I have, if I have low blood pressure, if I, if 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 if, if I'm, if I, if my body mass index is not excessive, if I don't smoke, if I don't drink, I exercise, I eat properly, and all of that. Okay, mm -hmm. those are things that promote health. Now, if I smoke, if I drink, I do drugs, I do whatever it is. Those are things that are likely to to have a degenerating effect on my health. Okay, okay. that's something you can demonstrate. Okay. That's okay. something demonstrable. It's not something that I have to, that operates just in my head. Right. Okay. I know, for example, that if, if I drive 
if I if if if, if I if I drive recklessly, chances mm -hmm. are I could end up in an accident. Or, okay. or, but if I drive safely, I reduce my, my chances of, of being in an accident. Don't eliminate, but 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 that's objective. And both of them have, to have a bearing on my well being. Just one second, Jeffrey. Just just a second. Just a second, Jeffrey. Jeffrey and Daniel, do either of you have anything that counts as evidence for this transcendent source? Yeah. That, that, okay. Could you tell us what that evidence is? Yeah. There can only be two entities. There can either be the human entity and there can only be the transcendent entity. If it is not the human entity, and we have already proven the human entity is subjective, that is change, that is variable, and that is dependent on whoa, the... Whoa, 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 give me a second. Well, first when, of all, I, I, I disagree with your premise. I disagree with your premise. You're, you're saying that morality can either be... It, 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 either it comes from humanity or it must come from a divine source. Yeah. There is only oh, humanity what? and there is only transcendence. No, 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 I disagree that premises. Where, where, where else would it come from? What other entity I, can there I be? I disagree that premise. Where else would what it come from? Can there be? Right, right in us, inside of us. Which us. is the human. Inside of us, inside of us, inside us, 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 us. us. Like, don't come from outside. outside. Well, there give me a second. Well, 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 first of all, first of all, all right, here, here, here is something that, you, you see, because we come from two very different perspectives, um, you know, it, it's going to be kind of difficult to explain this particular point. Now, human beings as far over millions of years. Okay, you, I broke up a while ago? Yeah, a little bit. Okay, I was saying that human beings, as far as science would show, evolved over millions of years and we evolved we evolved from a, 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 a primate um, species which existed before us and other modern day apes right now a lot of the what you'd call it now behavioral traits that humans modern day humans are displaying today existed in species that we evolved from millions of years before we existed. Let me give you an example. Do you know the, 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 the hormone called oxytocin? Mm -hmm. right, you've heard about oxytocin. Now, oxytocin is, is, I guess you could call it like a happiness. It's a kind of hormone that you, you feel toward yeah. your children. Right? Now, that particular hormone which we use to, I guess, reinforce the kind of bonding that we have with our children, okay. existed in species which, which, which existed on Earth long before human beings, right? The species like uh, mollusks, mollusks, right? Which are like sea snails. It, that, that hormone actually exists in that particular species. Mm. But for that species, it doesn't serve as a kind of bonding um, hormone. When human came and when human beings came on the scene, that is what the hormone does for us, right? So um, this idea that that morality either comes directly from human beings, modern day human beings, or from a divine source, is not true. A lot of a lot that we display now, that we call moral or good or bad or evil actually are behaviors which we have adapted from, from species which existed before human beings that we evolved, came through the evolutionary process. Sorry, sorry to interrupt, but we do have some questions. Um, the moderator um, of show producer indicated we do have some questions from the uh, comment section that we have not taken. All so, right, Alison. Yeah, yeah. You guys have had several questions in the chat room, actually. Yeah. Um, so I'll just run through, I'll give you three questions from Shalik Walker. Um, this is for the objective believers. How do the objective believers know that God is good? By what standard do they judge his pronouncements as moral? There's a question from Stephen Brown. Um, if a child, if giving a child chemo, even though it is painful, is for the greater purpose of curing their cancer, what is the greater purpose of a God who is also a transcendent moral source and who allows rape? Okay. And finally, there is a question from Joseph Farkasen. Um, and Joseph asks, aren't both sides on the same footing then? 
one side has a transcendent source of morality who isn't bound by that morality and the other side has a morality that is evolved but not practiced by all members of the community so those are those are some of the questions that are in the chat room all but right. but for future reference, yeah, when I ring the doorbell, that's what it's supposed to mean. Yeah, oh, sorry about that. Well, well, here's the thing, Alice, we, we, we had to mute. I had to mute your, your mic for a second. It, it was giving a, a load of feedback than normal. So sorry about that. And, and, and right now we had to mute Brother Nick's mic because we're still getting a feedback from you, Brother Nick. Your mic is only starting. Oh, Brother Nick, Brother Nick. Yeah. Let me tell you what to do, Brother Nick. Exit and come back. Exit, exit, click exit and come back in and see if it changes. See if it improves. All right, Alison, could you just read that first question again for objective believers, please? First question from Shalik Walker. How do the objective believers know that God is good? By what standard do they judge his pronouncements as moral? All right. As I stated before, um, Daniel can have a chance to respond as well. We believe that God by his nature, although the objective standard is coming directly from God, it's not a matter of God's pronunciation to say that something is, go is, um, is good or bad, but because of who he is, the standard just comes from his nature naturally, in a sense. So whatever God does, by definition, is good. In that regard. Well, so wait a minute, but I'm, I'm not finished yet. Sorry, 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 sorry. Okay, thank you very much. Because if God, God does not exist and there is no good or bad, you said, what does good mean? What does bad mean? You know, the objective to define what is good and what is bad, all you have is relativity. Say, what's good for me, which might not be good for you, but who cares? You know, it's all about what I want to do. And the Could quotation. I I'm yeah, not, the question, no, I'm could I respond quite, quickly? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not quite finished Okay, all right. The, um, uh, the quotation just says right here, on the one hand, objective moral claims transcend every human person. On the other hand, we value the personal more highly than the impersonal. So it is contradictory to assert that impersonal claims are entitled to the allegiance of our wills. The only solution to this paradox is to suppose that the order of objective moral claims good, very bad, is in fact rooted in the personality of God. That's why we say that without God, there is no good or evil. Could I just respond to that very quickly, Mr. Moderator? Yeah, yeah. All right, thank you very much. All right, now, Jeffrey, no. is, is it possible for God to commit an evil act? No. <laughs> so you're then empty. He's not, he's, he's not a moral being. If, 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 if whatever he does is simply called good, then he's not, if he's unable to commit an evil act, he's not a moral being. No, God is not subject, God is a source of morality, and so he's not subject to morality. But if he cannot commit an evil act, he's not a moral being. No, it's not a matter of cannot, it's a matter of... To you say just he, said so, you said he can't. To say he, cannot, to say he cannot commit an evil act is logically absurd, it's like saying a square but is not... Can God commit an evil act? No, he cannot. So in, other words, anything, so in other words, so in other words, if he calls for for human sacrifice, as he did with Abraham at one point, okay. And, and Abraham told him that he didn't. He, right. No, 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 no. But I'm asking. The fact but is, he accepted, he, he accepted the sacrifice of Jephthah's daughter. Right. So what? That is, what so, so, so that story, that story is ambiguous. with Jephthah's daughter. No, no, no. no, 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 no I'm just trying to establish. Three specific questions, and mm. especially the, 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 the last one I want to get to. Okay, okay. but, I, but I, answer, I answer the question. So, I mean, we have to take all this question off here. But I'm saying that we and believe we it. because of who he is. Well, the, the second, the second question, the second yes. question, the second question from Stephen Brown, I guess, would be related, mm. which would be, what is the greater purpose of a God who is also a transcendent moral source and who mm. allows something like rape? Okay. We believe, right, that... Well, let me hear from Daniel on that one. Since rape oh, disproportionately Daniel, affects uh, women. Okay, can you repeat the question for me, please? What is the greater purpose of a God who is also a transcendent moral source and who allows something like rape? Okay. One of the flaws in our opponent's reasoning is that they... they uh, they purport that if God exists, 
then he must also be a dictator in that he will intervene in all things and counteract all human free will. This is not the character of God as we know it from the Bible. The Bible teaches that while God has a supreme will, he also has a permissive will and that he allows us as human beings with the freedom of choice and with intellect and mind to make choices even if he does, himself does not agree with it. Mm -hmm. um, Can I just respond very quickly? Uh, uh, sorry, Daniel, I think what, 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 what your opponents are looking for is, is, is extra biblical argument because right. they, they don't share the, the Bible as a foundation. Could I just um, respond very quickly to Daniel? Very quickly. Oh, Daniel, okay. Daniel, Daniel can, you yes. think, can you think of one condition under which you personally would allow the rape of a nine year old? Me personally? No, I cannot. So you are saying then that there are contexts which God knows that is permissible. Yes. If I if I believe if I believe in the transcendent God who is all and is above all and knows all, then I must say that this God knows more than I. Yes. Okay. So there are there are conditions under which it is permissible for nine year old children to be raped. Why should we then even prevent it? Is that a matter of permission? Why, why, why should human beings even try to prevent it? Well, is that a matter of permissible for one? What we're saying here is that we human beings have free will. We believe that as we have the choice to do, we have the ability to choose to do right. But a person, a person, a person who is raped is not exercising free will. No, they're not. But the raper is, is exercising free will right there. Because if you got, what we're saying is that if we are allowing people to choose what to do. If God is going to say that, if God is going to create free moral agents, that means that he's giving people the opportunity to also choose to do the wrong thing. And it's not a matter of saying that all of these things are just going to go unpunished. We say that in the end, God says there will be judgment, there will yes. be resolution, and there will be, you know, a recording for, this, for the things that have been done in this life. So it's not a matter of so saying... What is, the, what is the point of us preventing rape? What is the point of the police no, for preventing it's rape? Good. Because it's still good to prevent rape. Why? It's not Why? A matter of it. Why? Why? Hold on a minute. Hold on. Can I come in? Can I come in? <laughs> please, please. If allow God, me. If God isn't preventing it, why should we? Right. I, I mean, in other words, in other words, are we now? Because if, if, if indeed there, there's an order on us, mm -hmm. okay, to prevent rape, that would be in, certainly be indicative of a human morality. That is to say, an interest in the well-being of another. Okay. Right. And seeking to be. Well enough, what I'm saying, and, and, and to the extent, from God. and to the extent that it is us who are seeking to reduce or eliminate that source of suffering, we right. that suggest that our morality is superior to that of your transcendent God. No, it would not, yes. because we're we're making many assumptions right here. Wait a minute, wait, 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 wait a minute. Let me talk. But God has never prevented a single rape. God has never prevented a single rape. May I speak, please? All right. Thank you. We are making many assumptions right here. One, that is said God's permissive will doesn't mean it's his prescriptive will. Okay? That is the one thing. We are also assuming that just because God doesn't prevent it now means he doesn't have the ability to. We are, and we are also assuming that... We are also assuming <laughs> that oh, boy! Oh, boy! We are also assuming that, we, that because, God doesn't, because God allows persons to do something that means he's saying, oh, you can do whatever you want. We're not believing that. We're not saying that. We live in a but world. But you don't know. But you don't know. You don't know. May I speak, please? Do you know? May I speak, please? Give my chance, like. We are saying that we live in a world that is affected <laughs> by sin. That's the first thing, right? And if you if you're going to have if you're going to have the ability to choose what we're going to do, if we're going to say we're going to, we can choose to do right or we can choose to do wrong, we God is going to say, "I'm allowing you to make that choice," right? And we are going to be we are going to be assessed or judged, so to speak, by whatever we did in our lives to not only do right by what we know, but what we did to help somebody along the way. So if we see if we have the chance to stop somebody from doing something bad and we don't do it, we are going to have a judgment for that. And that's not a matter of saying that God is going to stop the person, that God can't stop the person from doing that. He knows so why he doesn't he? Why. 
Because we, 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 we may not know what we may not know why, but that doesn't mean there's not a reason. No, no, no. Actually, uh, actually, uh, actually uh, Jeffrey, it's Jeffrey, 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 you've been talking, talking, talking uh, uninterrupted for too long. Don't. Just because we don't know doesn't mean a no, reason. Jeffrey, it, exists. Actually, Jeffrey, actually, Jeffrey, the fact that it isn't prevented is actual evidence that there's nobody there to prevent it apart from it, us. It is not. No, 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 it's not evidence so, of that. So, so you are you, saying you, that they... You, you, so, 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 hold on, so hold on, hold on, Jeffrey. Hold on, Jeffrey. The inactive... Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, this is unusual. Hold on a second. Jeffrey is saying, Jeffrey is saying that the inactivity and the undetectable the purple, of God the, the is actual evidence. You are no. saying that the inactivity of God is evidence of his work? No, I am saying that just because we don't see something now doesn't mean there is nothing there. That is what. I am saying just because we don't see the just because we don't see God come down and stop it and we might have to go and stop it, that doesn't mean he's that doesn't mean he's not there. So, so could you know, why, why, one question. Wait, 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 right? Because we're saying we're talking about what we would do if we were God. But we are not God. We can talk about what we would do if we were Prime Minister of Jamaica, but we are not Prime Minister. When we if we were to be in that position, we would see so many things that we don't know and we don't see. The question could be asked right here now. Is it better for God to say that all of, if God were to exist, is it better for him to make all of us do whatever he wants to do and we don't have any choice in the matter? Or should he allow us to choose whatever is good or whatever we want to do, whether it is good or bad? And most people would say, I would rather have the choice to, 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 to do what I feel is right rather than be forced to do something that I don't want to do. So the question there is... All right, hold on a minute. Wait, 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 wait. No, no, hold on, guys. Hold on, guys. I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to preempt our moderator, but I do believe that Alison has some other questions. Yes. And, and we're kind yes. of coming down to ten. So, Alison. Yes. 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 What is um, that time? Hmm. There was, there was a question from Joseph Farkasson, mm -hmm. Remember, are both sides on the same footing? Then one side has a transcendent source of morality that isn't bound by that morality. And the mm -hmm. other side has a morality that is evolved but not practiced by all members mm -hmm. of the community. Um, well, I guess I guess well, we could respond for us, Ilir. Yes, yes. Right. Yes. So, so even though well, even though human morality is evolved, um, and and uh, of course the fact that it is an evolved adaptive trait doesn't mean that it binds and governs and predetermines everybody's behavior. As a matter of fact. What, what really happens in human societies is that as the chances for um, quote-unquote evil deeds increases, we actually carry them out more and more. Fine? So in, in, very, in a very small society, imagine a group of six people who are living as a clan. Well, again, clan, it's it's because it's six of you. Okay, I'm, I'm saying in a group of six people who live in a small clan, it makes no sense for one member of that group to steal something from another member of the group because they will immediately see that you are using this particular item or device or whatever. So it, it, it makes no sense. But as the group gets larger and the opportunity for stealing gets greater, then things like theft will start to happen. So yes, human morality is an evolved adaptive behavior. But it doesn't determine or, or it doesn't predetermine or prescribe how every single human being will behave. It doesn't. Right, because again, it's like health. I mean, in other words, you have a broad notion of what good health is. Okay, and I mean, and and there are, are objective determinants that go into what good health is. But the, but the fact is, what what might what might be determinants of good health for this person might be might be for somebody else. I mean, for somebody like who is let us say. Um, who 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 is a diabetic? Well, you know, a lot of sweets might be, might be a good idea for them. That might be a bad idea. But for somebody who doesn't have that problem, sweet is not a problem. You know. So, yes. but but what I'm saying is that it all operates with a broad notion of 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 of, of, of welfare, well-being. Okay, and the and and, and the configuration of well-being will vary depending on the human being or the sort of relationship they right. have with well, being. back on the, on the, the, the definition yes. of morality, you know. Um, the, Jeffrey was asking at first, I think they agreed upon a, a closing con conclusion, closing statements. Yes. I guess we, we yes. have to get to them now and then we can move to the, the hang on. Um, 
who, who, right. who, who's got to go first? Uh, proposal should go first. Proposal? Um, proposal should go first. All right. I'll All right. Take it. All right. You want to go? All right. So let me close then. All right. So I'm okay. going to close. What what my opponent, what um what my colleague and I have put forward tonight uh, about the natural evolution of morality in human beings and a kind of behavior which resembles morality in, in um, higher mammals like primates is well documented, is well researched in evolutionary biology, evolutionary psychology, um, in anthropology and a number of other areas. This is well documented research. It, it, is, it is shown in a number of different species including human beings how um, moral, a kind of moral adaptive behavior can evolve. So, in substantial amounts of evidence which supports our point, substantial amounts of objective, um, peer-reviewed, verifiable, hard evidence. Good. Now, to the objective observer who is watching this debate, if we have presented um, credible, peer-reviewed, well-researched and documented evidence for morality being a natural phenomenon, there is no reason to now go over and above and invoke a supernatural source for this thing if a natural um, explanation already exists. First thing. Second thing, our opponents have not presented anything which amounts to the standard of evidence that we we have in terms of demonstrating the existence of an objective source and they have yet to tell us exactly how this, this transcendent source would have um, transferred morality from itself to humanity. They have not in any way done either of those things. I rest my case. All right. Um, uh, Jeffrey, five yeah, minutes. I'll respond to that. Morality is something we talk about, we're looking at what's right and what's wrong, what's good and what's bad. And morality by definition has to deal with relationships because we, a person by him or himself doesn't really have anything to moral. And morality deals with how we relate to each other. And as such, we look at the standards of right and wrong about how we treat each other, how we interact with each other. If we're saying that morality, as my opponents have said, is just an expression or the byproducts of social, biological, evolution and conditioning, then moral, moral values will vary from per person to person, place to place. You evolved one way, I evolved another. My society has one value, your society has an opposing value. You may say rape is okay, I may say rape is not okay. Who is right, who is wrong? The words of one humanist philosopher said, the moral principles that govern our behavior are rooted in habit and custom feeling and passion. And I quote from William Lane Craig's book, Reasonable Faith. In a world without God, who is to say which actions are right and which actions are wrong? Who is to judge that the values of Adolf Hitler are inferior to that of a saint? The concept of morality loses all meaning in a universe without God. As one contemporary atheist ethicist says, to say that something is wrong because God forbids it is understandable to anyone who believes in a law forgiving God. But to say that something is wrong even though no God exists to forbid it, is not understandable. The concept of moral obligation is unintelligible apart from the idea of God. The words remain, but their meaning is God, right? So for a universe without God, good and evil do not exist. There is only the bare, valueless fact of existence, and there is no one to say that you are right and I am wrong. So in closing, all I want to say is, if you know within your heart that there is something out there that is wrong, even if the whole world says it's right, even though somebody may say it's right for me, you believe that that thing is wrong, then if there is no God, you have no basis on which to say that that thing is wrong because anybody can do anything. If you are saying that it is wrong, even, even though people say it's okay, by automa you're automatically appealing to something that is outside of ourselves, something that is transcendent, and that something is a source of objective morality outside of humanity. I believe that my colleague and I have shown that if my... <laughs> We are right, and we come from, and the morality comes from evolution. Then nothing is, everything is relative. There is nothing absolute. Anything can go, and it's just about what I feel versus what you feel. 
But if there is absolute right and absolute wrong, there must be an absolute source of that absolute right and wrong. Mr. Moderator. All right. Thank you very much, um, ladies and gentlemen. I think that's it. We had a vibrant, lively, lively debate. Um, uh, are we going to continue for, for hang on? Uh, uh, well, um, I think Hillier has his announcement. Uh, no. Um, I mean, I would leave that. And that's entirely for you, um, uh, Mr. Moderator and our producer, um, as to whether we have a hang on. I mean, I suspect that maybe oh. for 15 minutes tops. Uh, I, right. have, I have work tomorrow, so I, I can't remember. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It kind of late. We, we went over time, so yeah. Yeah. Right. no problem. No problem. We can, we can end it. We can end it. No, I mean I'm, you know, not a problem. Yeah. But well, the the yeah. Indeed, 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 indeed. And on on behalf of of the the the, yeah, the skeptics crew, um, you know, we'd certainly like to to thank um. Our, our, our debate partners, uh, Jeffrey and Daniel, um, and certainly our, our, our hard-working producer, standing producer this evening, even although we irritated her. Um, yes, our, sorry our, about that. <laughs> our, our deepest apologies. Um, I'm sorry about that. Um, and of course, a big, big, big thank you to uh, B. Richard. <laughs> Um, well, I still don't know. kept dropping off and I had to keep coming yeah, on. That's all right. It happens. No okay. problem. No problem. Fondly known as Breda Nick. <laughs> um, and um, so we're, we're, we're thankful to, to all of you for participating and, and, and hope that we can, we can put together another debate on a, on a, on a similar topic soon. Thank you for inviting us. Yeah, respect you. Respect you. Yeah. All right, Daniel. Take care of yourself, all right? Thank you, thank you. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, man. So on behalf of the entire team here, um, you know, good night to everybody who has um, participated online, asking questions, uh, leaving comments. Thank you from the team of Skeptically Speaking. Our season two is actually closed, and any um, episode that we keep after this time will be a special event, and we'll definitely keep you posted. So thank you, thank you once again for supporting uh, Skeptically Speaking. My name is Clive Forrester, and I'm signing out for another episode. Goodbye, right. and good night. Good night, thank you. Good night.